is a bit unusual. It's um, once weekly insulin. So mm -hmm. uh, I think um, whatever we have talked about is the current scenario and I'm, I'm talking about the future. So many people, many patients talk to us, come to us and say, uh, they mistake the GLP once weekly GLP one to be as once weekly insulin, and they come and say, mujhe hafte mein ek bar wala insulin mil raha hai. So that is not in there yet in the market, but it is soon going to be. So I think we should have a good idea of what that once weekly insulin is. So I think this is um, a, a no brainer. The 27% of our patients they think that taking insulin. Uh, with the meals, you know, that's that becomes a big headache for them. And more than 90% of them expressed a wish that the insulin, if it can not be injected every day, but at least once a week, that will be a great improvement. So if you see here, this is the current um, on um, um, insulins which are there. And this is ICODEC, which is the once weekly one. So look at the mechanism of protraction of the insulins. Which are there. So, blood migration, same with in 300. You are reducing the surface area, causing even slower dissociation, which is applicable for glargine U300. Detimir and Degludec, they bind to serum albumin, and that is how their action is prolonged. And Icodec is separate from these because it uses two or three mechanisms to prolong its action. So this is the most studied once weekly insulin till date, which is called ICODEC. So here it is not only albumin binding, but also increase proteolytic stability and reduce receptor affinity. And I'll come to that in a minute. So you can see the half-life here of 24 hours for, um, uh, for Glargine. And here you can see this 196 hours for uh, the ICODEC. Now, these are the changes uh, which are there uh, in the ICODEC. So, you can see there are a few changes here. So here you can see tyrosine into glu um, uh, glulysine, um, uh, histone change here. Um, that these red means these are borrowed from oral insulin which they were planning uh, by they use this to reduce the proteolytic, making it more stable to, to reduce the proteolytic association. So you have got another change here, which is B16. And this is very important because what happens because of this change of tyrosine to histone, it reduces the receptor affinity. Now, we know that if, it's, if the receptor affinity is reduced, then it will work less. But hang on, it is not just reducing the receptor affinity because it is reduced, it reduces the receptor mediated clearance. If it's not binding that well, it will not be cleared that well. So the main thing is it will bind slowly, not that much, and will get dissociated also very slowly because receptor mediated clearance is not there. And there is a, a, a mini peg spacer with which it links to the albumin. And that is how um, um, the action is prolonged. So you can see here, there are two or three mechanisms by which the action is prolonged. One, by binding to the albumin and getting released slowly. Second, by reducing the receptor affinity. Therefore, receptor-mediated clearance, because when the insulin binds to the receptor, it is internalized and then degraded. That is reduced. And the third is it increases the proteolytic stability of the insulin molecule. So the three mechanisms of which I feel that this one is the most important one and the most one which contributes most to the increase in the duration of action. So the mean half-life is about 196 hours and clinical state is achieved after three to four once weekly subcut insulins. And so although insulin icodec has been designed to have a prolonged PK, remember just like others where they, they use the albumin, a slow and steady PD effect, which is mainly due to the receptor binding and receptor-mediated clearance, that is more important for um, their um, um, enhanced um, um, or prolonged duration of action. Just give me a second. 
Okay, so I hope I am still audible. So, hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. I'm audible. Please, okay. Uh, yes. Please continue, sir. Yes. So this is the mechanism. So you can see here um, in day one um, in here when the icodec is injected. So at day seven, there is little bit coming into the blood, and then. It is stuck to the albumin and then slowly released from the albumin. Now, a question comes if something is getting stuck to the albumin and prolonging the action, then in what happens if your albumin levels are very low? So you see here, the concentration of IQDEC is about less than 500 nanomoles per liter, which is substantially lower than the albumin concentration, which is 6 lakh nanomoles per liter. And each albumin molecule has at least four high affinity sites. So therefore, even in higher concentration of IQDEC, there are more than 2,000 fold excess of binding sites. Therefore, even if there is albuminuria or low albumin, you would not have any problems um, uh, with the IQDEC concentration. So you can see here, this is blood gene, and this is the number of weeks. So this is blood gene here. You can see the levels going up and down. And at the bottom of that is the icodec. So it's slowly going up at one week, two weeks going up, and at around four weeks, it reaches the um, steady state. another graphical ex um, explanation the insulin icode concentration at one week this is a model predicted one so one week is roughly around 40 to 50 percent effect you will get at two weeks you will get about 60 percent three weeks you'll get close to 80 percent and at uh, more than um, 90 percent at four weeks so you require at least four weeks to reach a steady state so However, the, the, the model predicted distribution of glucose lowering effect, um, you know, the steady state, that doesn't look too bad because if, if, you, if you draw a line here, it is somewhere there. So between 12% to 16%. So that's the variation that is there, which is not too bad. Now, how about the hard endpoints? Now, this is the phase two trial wherein they compared the once weekly icodec with once daily GLAD gene. Now, mind you, if you are going to give once weekly icodec, you have to give seven times the dose that you would get for GLAD gene. For example, if you are giving GLAD gene 10 units daily for icodec, you have to give 70 units weekly. So 70 units all in one go. So 70 units on Monday and then next Monday, 70 units like that. So this one, what they did was they compared three types of titration. Titration A, titration B, titration C versus GLAD gene. Okay. So Icotec was initiated at 70 units weekly and GLAD gene was initiated at 10 units uh, weekly. So what was the titration? So this is titration, uh, sorry, this is titration A. That was going very slowly. So you start <coughs> you start at 10 units, that is 70 units every week. So 70 units um, one day and then after one week, 70 units. And if you want to make any changes to the blood sugar, so your target blood sugar is between 80 to 130 fasting. If it is less than 80, you reduce by 21 units. If it is more than 130, you increase by 21 units because... 21 divided by 7 is 3 units. That's the change you are making. Titration B, that here, slightly higher titration. So 4 units per day. That is 28 units per week. And titration C is you choose a tighter fasting blood sugar level between 70 to 108. So you can see here, at the end of treatment, the titration A seems to fare better and almost as good as insulin glargine, perhaps slightly better. 
Um, the other titration mechanisms fare slightly better than glargine, but they have slightly more hypoglycemic range blood sugar readings, which the titration A doesn't have. So, glargine 10 units once a day and uh, Icodec 70 units weekly. So, hypoglycemia with the titration A, if you look at the rate, it is 0.73, which is comparable to the glargine, which is 0.53. 5A. However, if you want to titrate at a higher dose or you choose a lower fasting sugar, then you get more hypoglycemia with the icodec. Um, again, um, the, the titration C is where you're, you're uh, aiming for a lower fasting glucose. There you can see the fasting sugars coming down, but otherwise titration A and B both are similar to glargine. And this is the number of patients achieving um, um, age beyond C of less than seven, you can see glargine and titration A are about the same. So what it does it tell us? It tells us that if you're using glargine 10 units daily versus Icodex 70 units once a week, one dose, that is equivalent in many respects. So what's the dosage? Dosage were the same. So you can see here titration A, 142 units and 145 units. And there was no increase in weight. So the other question is that this is, I've shown you in insulin naive patients. What about those who were already on basal insulin? Suppose somebody is already on 20 units of glargine. Now you want to change over to this once weekly uh, icodec. If you start with um, uh, 70 units a day, it will take a bit of time to pick up because as I said, it will take four weeks to reach a peak effect. So. Till that time, will the blood sugar stay high? So they come up with this idea. This time, individual switching from a daily, sorry, there's a lot of noise. So individual switching from a daily basal insulin. What they did was they went into uh, two steps. One um, a group, they had a loading dose. So you give double the dose on the first week. And then subsequent weeks, the same. And the other one, no loading dose. So like uh, um, insulin initiation. So they were randomized to one initial 100% loading dose, no loading dose. And the third one was insulin glargine. Now you see the pen they have mentioned here for the first time, it is 700 units per ml. Initially, I was wondering if we're giving 70 units, there's so much of insulin, the patient will have a lot of pain, discomfort, um, lipohypertrophy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But this is what they have shared: 700 units per ml. So that means that the, the the volume is not that much. Okay. So here, what they showed is those who have loading dose given, uh, they seem to do better as compared to glargine U100, albeit slightly more hypoglycemia, but loading dose seems to be better than no loading dose. So you can see here. Uh, uh, where should I follow? Uh, so. Look at this. I think that will give us a better picture. So this is the one where no loading dose is given. So patients who are already on basal insulin, no loading dose given. Look, the blood sugar shoots up because the insulin has not started to work yet. And when you give the loading dose, it almost follows the curve of that of blood. So the other, the hypoglycemia was similar. Uh, I'll have to quickly go through because I've got very little time left. The other trials, they have got only top line results. So all I'm showing you are these are top line results. We don't have it published yet. So onward one to onward six. So they compare Icodec with Glargine in insulin naive patients and insulin on basal um, um, insulin um, uh, patients on basal bolus insulin. There's only one, uh, which is uh, onwards five, uh, onward six, which is type one diabetes that they have used. And here you can see. Uh, in onwards 1 and onwards 4, the HB1C drop was similar to glargine. Uh, the hypoglycemia also was similar to glargine. Um, the other comparison with Degludec, again, HB1C seems to be better than Degludec. In two of the trials, only thing is in the type 1 trial, the hypoglycemia was much more and statistically significant in the Icodec arm. Uh, I will skip this and uh, there is one more trial going on with once weekly Icodec and once weekly semaglutide to give you once weekly Icosima. So GLP-1 plus basal insulin once weekly. 
So some unknown areas, so last two slides, are some unknown areas, we don't have data on hepatic or renal insufficiency. What about hypoglycemic potential in response to unexpected exercise? Dose adjustment would only be possible after a week. So if somebody has got hypoglycemia, maybe for the rest of the week, we have to keep on increasing the carbohydrate intake. Safety in type 1 diabetes is still out unclear. And what about real-world dressings? So the good thing is, is once weekly, there is no increase in hypoglycemia. Efficacy is retained, but there's no onset of maximal action. So we have to wait. The patients will have to wait for four weeks to see the maximum action. I was initially worried about the high amount of injection, but I can see in one trial they mentioned that it is 700 units per ml. Should we or should we not be giving the loading dose is the other question. And uh, we need more data in presence of hyperbuminemia or hyperbuminemia, even though it does suggest that it should not affect it. So with that, I end and thank you. And sorry, I'm 30 seconds overstepped my